I'm Pastor Greg Cheslin. I want to welcome you all to 4th Avenue United Methodist Church. We're so glad you're here with us that you join together to offer our prayer and praise to God. If you are a guest this morning, let me ask you to take a moment, uh, especially, to fill out the, uh, what we call the Connect card. And uh, if you'll share with us your contact information, we want to respond to your visit by sharing with you how much we appreciate you being with us this morning. We have a special guest at the piano bench this morning. I've been practicing her name for a week now. Would you welcome with me Karen Jorgensen? Kara, I did it again. Ah. Carol Jorgensen, it's right up there. Carol Jorgensen. Carol, I am so sorry. It's a Freudian slip of some kind. Anyway, it's great to have you with us uh, this morning. We have a couple of announcements in the, in the bulletin that I'd like to share with you. I'm going to call on um, uh, Kirsten Stradon. She's going to make her way to the uh, lecture this morning. She has an announcement. I'm supposed to be excited. It's only two weeks until we start Vacation Bible School. And we have wonderful volunteers recruited. Now all we need are the children to get registered. So if you know anybody who has kids to register, will you please get, encourage them to get that done this week? I did send out a postcard reminder. The other thing is for Vacation Bible School, we're going to do a hands-on mission project. And we're asking for school supplies. Uh, your team of nine was just down in uh, at Midwest Mission. They packed school bags, so we're going to pick, pack about 25 more to send down to Midwest Mission. And so if you don't want to shop for school supplies, that list was in the bulletin not too long ago. Mark an envelope in the pew with VBS, put in a dollar or two, and we will do the shopping so that we don't end up with a hundred boxes of crayons and no rulers or no notebooks. So your help is needed again. And like I said, if you have children that you want registered, please try to get that done this week. Thank you. Thank you, Kirsten. Um, Kirsten said put a dollar or two in your envelope. I'll suggest 10 or 20, okay? I want to raise the ante a little bit. Thanks for the enthusiasm. I appreciate that. In your bulletin, there are other announcements that are important. Um, uh, this tomorrow night, where uh, the community is gathering together at the movies downtown, I think it's called the Heritage Theater. Is that right? Village. No, it's called the what? Village. Village Theater. I'll get it eventually. Tomorrow night at six o'clock, there's going to be a movie shown there. Your your uh, your entrance to that movie is to take one of these shopping bags here, fill it up with some groceries, non-perishable food items, present that at the door, and you can be part of the movie. And I let me suggest that. Families and small children should come and enjoy that. I'll be there. It'll be a fun time. Many folks from the church will be there tomorrow night at the Village Theater at 6 o'clock downtown. Are there any other announcements that we need to share with each other this morning? Well, if not, let us now prepare our hearts to worship God. The candles are lit to remind us Jesus Christ, the risen one, is surely among us. our praises to God. Let's feel like it's a seventh inning stretch. Let's get our bodies moving, our hearts pumping as we sing this song. Taste and see that the Lord's good.
Can't do it that way. <laughs> you didn't sound like you were rejoicing. You certainly didn't sound like you were glad. All right? Let's try it again, shall we? The Lord has restored our fortunes. Let us rejoice to be glad. The Lord has brought us near, a people far off. Let us rejoice to be glad. The Lord has reconciled us in one body through the cross. Let us rejoice to be glad. We're losing steam, come on. <laughs> now we all have access to God through the one spirit. Let us rejoice to be glad. And he can make God up for us with this hymn. All right? So as we prepare to hear the word of God, we pause to place ourselves yet again in God's presence, to confess our sin and seek God's mercy and his forgiveness. Let us pray. Lord, we confess that we are sinners, that we fall short of your glorious ideal in the thoughts we think, in the words we say, in the things we do, and in the things we leave undone. Come with your cleansing power, purify our hearts, and release us.
to live in newness of life. My brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are freed and forgiven. Glory and thanks be to God. And all God's people rejoice, saying, Amen. You may be seated. Testament, the letter of the Apostle Paul to the Ephesians. Don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. You were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision, even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. In those days you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel, and you did not know the covenant promises God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope, but now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people, when in his own body on the cross he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. He did this by ending the system of law with its commandments and regulations. He made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from the two groups. Together, as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross, and our hostility toward each other was put to death. He brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him, and peace to the Jews who were near. Now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together we are his house built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him you Gentiles are also being made part of this dwelling where God lives by his spirit. Here ends the first lesson. Our song of the day is called Jesus is entitled Jesus Messiah. Join me as we sing together.
Psalms and Proverbs, yeah. I'll bet you got that from the kids. Yeah, you sure did. It's, it's very fragile, that's right. It is. Oh, it got rained on. Mm. Well, anyway, let me let me bring it together here. We've got to get back to Vacation Bible School, which is coming up in two weeks. Is everybody excited about Vacation Bible School? You all know about it, right? Well, I want to give you a special. Um, I want us to give you a special assignment. An assignment, very important assignment. One of the things that we want to do with Vacation Bible School is we want to invite our friends to come, because the Word of God, the story of Jesus, is such a precious gift. It would be a shame for anybody that we would know to not know the story of Jesus. And one of the great opportunities that you have. To share the story with Jesus is to call up a friend. Oh, 
You and I need to have a one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Right, he's right here with us, and he's up in the sky, that's right. So, I want to ask you, between now and two weeks from now, I want you to invite a friend to come with you to Vacation Bible School. And if you do that, I'm going to give you a special gift. Here's the incentive, we call this a, uh, an incentive, or a carrot. If you bring a friend to Vacation Bible School, I'm going to give you a coupon for a free ice cream cone at Dairy Queen. All right? Huh? Say that again? You're an athlete? Is that what you said? Oh, okay. All right. So find another athlete to come to Vacation Bible School, and you'll get a coupon for a Dairy Queen ice cream cone. How's that? I, athletes don't eat ice cream. <laughs> I knew there was a connection. I knew there was. I thought I'd beat him in the past, but okay, all right. Let me think about that. You can give it to your sister. Think of the love that expanded your home. How wonderful that would be. Yeah, right here. Well, right? I'm going to think of another incentive for you. An incentive for athletes. Oh, good. good. Let's pray. Jesus, the story of your love for us is so precious. It makes such a difference in our lives that we cannot keep quiet. We must share this wonderful news. Help us, Lord, in the next two weeks to find a way to invite others to come and share in the wonderful joy of knowing you and hearing the story of your love. Inspire us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for sharing these moments with me. And those of you who didn't get one of those red bags last week, come over here with me. I'm going to grab one. I'm going to give one to you right now. Come on over here. Did you get one last week? No, you didn't. All right. Grab one of those. Go ahead. There you go. Where's one for you, brother, Joe? Athletes can come to the movies, too. Oh, yeah. You went to the Incredibles movie. I did that, too. going to be a little bit on the shorter side. Now, don't get too excited about that. The reason the message is going to be on the shorter side is because I'm going to give the balance of my time to you in the congregation. I have an important assignment that I want to give to you as a part of our proclamation uh, this morning. And, uh, and Ian's got the, uh, the wireless microphone. He's going to be moving amongst the congregation for you to share uh, this morning. I want to thank you as we begin the message for your commitment to read through the letter to the Ephesians. We began last week with our first of six messages from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. And I asked you to be reading uh, chapter one of Ephesians this week. And for those of you who were faithful in doing that, I want to thank you for that. If you were not faithful in doing that, let me ask you to move on to Ephesians chapter 2 this week and uh, give yourselves to reading and meditating on the powerful words that are there in Ephesians chapter 2. The reason why this morning's message is going to be a little on the shorter side is that as I was preparing for the message, I was inspired to give you an opportunity to give testimony to... Um, to the way that this morning's scripture speaks, uh, speaks to you. So, uh, at one time, you had a wonderful tradition of sharing of prayer requests and testimonies in the worship service, and we're going to take some time to do that in this morning's uh, service. So get your, um, get your mind ready for, for that. 
Also, as I was preparing for this morning's message, I came to mind a song that I think typifies what I'm trying to teach this morning and the theme of this morning's service. The song is entitled, The Family of God, and I've asked um, Carol to learn the song, and she's going to play it once, I'm going to sing it once, the words will be up on the screen, and then I'd like you to sing it back. So I'll sing it once, and then you sing it back, okay? The Apostle Paul proclaims this new reality boldly in his letter to the, to the Ephesians. Let's read these words. So now, you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together, we are his house built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. In other words, Paul is saying, Hey, you Gentiles, you were once strangers, estranged from God, lost in your ignorance and sin, without any hope in this world, cut off from the God who created you. You were also estranged from God's beloved chosen people, the Jews, at odds with the people that I originally chose for myself. But now, because of the gift of Christ, because of his cross and his resurrection, the door of God's eternal embrace has opened even to you and united the two groups in one family. Now God has one people, one family, all united in Jesus Christ. We are strangers no more. Where there was once only distrust, 
distance and division, there is now only a bond of love. That is God's purpose and vision for the world that instead of division and distrust and cynicism, cynicism, there would be a uniting of God's beloved people, united under the lordship of Jesus Christ, replacing that cynicism is only the bond of love. And you and I, as the people of God, the church of God, the family of God, are called to be the shining example of where that is true. Where enemies are now friends. Where God has reconciled us, not only to himself, but to each one. Um, but us together as one family. And so this morning, the testimonies that I want to invite you to talk about with, with us is how you're glad to be a part of God's family. How you're glad to be a part of God's family. I'm going to share with you a recent testimony of my own experience, and then I'm going to turn it over to others in the congregation. Let the Spirit speak to you about how you can share with the congregation in a short way, brief way, how you're glad to be a part of God's family. So, Let's see. About three weeks ago, uh, my family was experiencing a fair amount of stress. And in particular, um, one of our children was really struggling. And that child's struggles was causing, was, was causing an enormous stress in our home. And we were very concerned about this child. On Saturday, at the height of this anxiety that I was carrying around with me, I received a text message from a friend from my previous church up by Brainerd. They were just inquiring how I was doing. I took the chance to, to, to tell them that we were going through a particularly stressful time, and I asked this man to pray for me and for my family. He further said I, that he was in the car all day long and that if I wanted to call him, uh, he would be glad to visit with me. But it was a Saturday and Sunday was coming and, and I didn't feel like I really had the time to talk on the phone and so I didn't make the phone call. The next morning, I came here at church at 8 o'clock in the morning and I was getting ready for the service. And all of a sudden, somebody from the congregation came into my office and said, there's somebody here that would like to see you. And in walked my friend. My friend had been on a trip to Iowa, of all places. He was there. He and his wife were going to pick up a dog. They were adopting a new dog. They went to Iowa. And they determined that they would time their trip so that they could stop in Faribault for 15 minutes so that they could see me. And they came here simply to remind me that they were in my corner, that they were caring for me, and they led me in prayer while I was here. In fact, it was right in the corner, right over there. I showed them briefly the church, and they put their arms around me. They reminded me that God was in it with me, and, that, and they prayed. And it was the most unbelievable moment where uh, the faithfulness of God's people, their thoughtfulness, their care for me, just lifted me in a way that you, can, you can't imagine. I mean, it was such a discouraging situation that we were dealing with. I was tempted to think that God had somehow abandoned us. But at a very low point, there these people were, these faithful people who were there to remind me that I'm loved, that they love me, that God loves me, and that God is in this situation with me. And amazingly, three weeks later after that event, something radically changed in my family situation. Just when I was ready to give up hope, these people reminded me there was hope. And three weeks later, a miracle happened. Perhaps at some point, I'll feel like I can share more of the details with you about that miracle, but 
I'm glad that I'm a part of the family of God because I'm loved by God's people. And they, when my faith falters, they remind me that God is real, God cares, and God is faithful. Now yesterday, let's turn it. Okay, there's the theme that I want you to be thinking about. So recently, um, this friend of mine, who's pastor in Stewartville, his name is Wayne Surratt. And about four or five weeks ago, he started texting me on Sunday mornings with a word of encouragement, uh, wishing me well in my sermon, wishing me well in my leading God's people in prayer and praise. And so this, this wonderful pattern of caring for one another has been taking place recently. Well, yesterday, he sent me, go on to the next one, he sent me this picture. A couple of kids from our congregation, okay? He was involved in something called Storm Camp, okay? And he wanted to share with me a picture of Maddie and Miles Schiffer from our church. And he said these were great storm campers from Faribault. So anyway, I asked the two of them if they would share a little bit about their recent experience with Storm Camp. Can you come on up here? I'm going to give you the microphone right here. I got one right here. Now remember, brief and enthusiastic, okay? <laughs> Step right up here. Tell us why you're glad to be a part of the family of God. I'm glad to be a part of the family of God because um, you can do pretty much anything, really. Um, he can help us with our demons and uh, he's greater than anything. Yeah. How'd you see that in Storm Camp? Like he can really help, like he really helped us with our jobs, like when they seemed like really hard. He helped us like with teamwork and stuff, so yeah. Wonderful, great, thank you Miles. Right, so I'm happy to be part of the family of God because, um, especially at Storm Camp, because Storm Camp offers so many resources to find jobs, get a team, and they're all wonderful people in the community of Christ. Um, also, God helps with little things, like um, on Wednesday we were all painting fences and we were all tired and hot, and then the woman came out with fresh watermelon, and we took a 10 minute break, and then we got the fence done about an hour quicker than I think we would have, because of the 10 minute break for watermelon and the conversation with that woman. Um, also, I didn't know Pastor Wayne did that. That's pretty cool. He just seems awesome. Um, so I'm happy to be part of the family of God because all the little things connect super well, and it makes to be a good team. Great. Thank you. Let me add to the story. I, Wayne also texted me. He said that, um, that the, uh, the camp did an amazing good. There were 11 teams that completed 84 worksite projects. 84 worksite projects, 11 teams, tremendous connection with the community amongst 53 youth campers. That's an amazing, that's an amazing story. We're gonna hear more about that. In Chatfield, Grand Meadow, Byron, and Rochester were some of the places where, those, where that work was being done. Who can share with me why they're happy, that they're glad to be part of the family of God? Would you step up and provide the microphone to our brothers? Right here, Dwayne. Is that? Hello? Why does that happen? <laughs> it's turned on. You got it on back there? No, no. Here we go. Step right up. Stand up, brother. I'm happy to uh, be a... God is in my life, and uh, be a, I'm happy to be a child of God. Um, I work at a place where um, there, aren't, there aren't a lot of Christians, and I even work with a guy who says he's a Christian. <clears throat> he goes on, on uh, mission trips and all this, and um, the one scripture that comes to mind that's constantly in my mind at work is that uh, as Christians, we need to come from among them and be separate, and I've got people that I work with who aren't Christians who curse like you wouldn't believe. And sometimes it feels like a dagger is just going in my ear. And I just have to separate myself from them. And sometimes I just feel lonely. It's like, wow, 
you know, I have a 12-hour shift and I have to, you know, deal with this. And even the guy who says he's a Christian, he'll even apologize when he curses, but it never stops him from cursing. Mm -hmm. So I always have to step away from him. And I'm like, God, you know, sometimes it's, it's a lonely place. You know, if I'm in there for 12 hours um, and I have to hear this, I have to step away or, you know, try to ignore it. But then, uh, you know, God is always with me because he'll bring to mind um, uh, a hymn or a song. And uh, there's also a scripture that says we ought to pray without ceasing. So even if I don't have that song or that hymn coming to me, then I'll just start praying. You know, I pray in tongue. You know, pray, you know, either way, I'm just speaking to God. And God always is there every time I go to him. And he's like, you know what, man, I know. <laughs> I know it's hard sometimes, but I'm always with you. And I'm always going to be with you. So I'm just, I praise God for being a part of God's family. Thank you, Dwayne. Who's next? Over here. Being part of God's family puts me in touch with people who can support me in time of need. It puts me in touch with people who and work beside me to continue God's work here on earth. It puts me in touch with people that I can share joy and good times as well. And people I can sit down, kneel down and pray with. I have a common bond. A uh, love of Jesus and a dedication to his work. Thank you, Ron. Who's next? Dale. I was out in the woods cutting wood, <clears throat> and I dropped the tree, and my dog always comes along with me, which is great. But the tree was falling right for the dog, and the dog knew enough to get out of the way and find. Yeah, there is a God, but I was cutting a, another tree down, just cutting it up, all of a sudden, this tree right next to it decided to fall down, which I didn't have none. But, you know, did not know why it fell, but it fell right. The V of the tree came right towards me, and it, it was right in the middle of the V of the tree. And then knocked a chainsaw out of my hand, and it just grazed my back. And it was right then and there, I knew there is a God. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dale. Right here, Kirsten. I think I'll speak for those of us who were on the mission trip. Uh, we were, uh, I think we all had a good time, but we all were supportive of each other. Uh, I was in a situation where I couldn't walk back and forth from the dorm to the to the uh, place where we worked, so Linda was my chauffeur. But we sat around and we visited, we had devotions, and in the dormitory, there were nine of us from Faribault, and on Monday, 10 people from Michigan came. There were seven young people and three adults, and it got very, very noisy. But we had a wonderful time together, so we had the bond with the team from Michigan that we all were children of God, we all love God, and it was really special. The last morning we had communion together. So that, so that was a terrific experience. Thank you, Kirsten. Who else? Why are you glad to be a part of the family of God? Right over here. Sharon. The lightning struck, right, Sharon? <laughs> he made me promise that I do that. Not a good speaker at all. But I like the support we got from these church members here. When our son had a stroke a couple weeks ago, and he's recovering, and he was able to go home. 
and our grandson fell from a rooftop and hitting his head on cement and got a severe brain injury. And he is recovering and is able to go back to work. And uh, I appreciate the support we've gotten and the questions in the, from the church. Great. So there is a guy. Absolutely. Who's the next person to share? Why are you glad that you're part of the family of God? Right over here, Joe. Gonna get your workout in. I am so thankful for the Ten Commandments. Thank you. Good wisdom there. Others. All right, thank you so much for sharing. Let's sing that song one more time, shall we? So remain seated as we sing. We'll sing twice through. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God, and then we'll turn to pray. They believe that they have uh, gotten all of the cancer, so Steve is entering into a time of recovery. So please be in prayer for him. We begin our time of prayer by offering together our church's breakthrough prayer. Let us pray together. Oh God, our God, we praise and magnify your name. Great are you, Lord and greatly to be praised. With you, all things are possible. We know that you are with us and for us, and your plans are for our good, for a future and a hope. Break through into our lives and into our church. Stir up afresh our faith. Set our hearts aflame with the fire of your love. Open our eyes to new, fresh possibilities and fill us anew with the power of your spirit. Usher us into a new season of faithfulness and fruitfulness for your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us continue our prayer in silence. O oh God, we do pray for your church, for your beloved people, for the family of God gathered in this place. We pray that you would fill our mouths with words of encouragement 
and compassion for one another. We pray that you would inspire our actions with love for our neighbors and for strangers alike. We pray, Lord, that you would direct our hands to be open to welcome all whom you send our way. We pray, O oh Lord, that our ministry, our congregation's ministry, would fulfill their intended aim to embody the warmth of Christ's embracing love and create among us in this family a spirit of generous hospitality. Lord, as we pray, we pray for those who are in need of your help. We pray for the hungry and the hurting. We pray for the lonely. We pray for the unemployed and the imprisoned. We pray for individuals and families in crisis. We pray for those without hope. We pray that you walk beside those who are struggling with depression or addiction and deliver them from its power. We pray that you would draw near to those who are newly married as they begin their life together as husband and wife. May their early days be blessed. We lift up Michael Truman, whose broken body and fragile life lies in the balance. Surround him with your love and give direction and guidance to Harry as he makes a difficult decision. Lord, continue to reach out in touch with your healing mercies, our brother Steve, as he recovers from cancer. And Lord, we pray that your protection would rest upon children in the womb who soon will be born. Bring them into this world safely. And may their births bring great joy to their families. Continue, O oh Lord, to lift up and heal those who have lost loved ones who are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. May they fear no evil knowing that you are with them. And now in the silence of our hearts, we lift up the prayers that are upon our hearts. God, we give you thanks that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus, you have broken down the walls of hostility and brought us together in one family as brothers and sisters of the one Lord, Jesus Christ. May we, inspired by the work of your Spirit, continue to practice loving one another, lifting one another up, comforting one another, serving one another, and doing all of those one another commands of scripture. May people see in us the presence of the living, loving Jesus Christ, in whose name we are bold to pray. And all God's people say, Amen. Now let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. The ushers wait upon us for this morning's offering.